Let's go over yesterday, guys and gals. We came into the trading session. We came to the trading session and I put up a symmetrical wedge. Now let's go over exactly what a symmetrical wedge is. I'm going to spend not too much time on this, but I want to go over some of these patterns. If you log in and the Magenta MA, which is our trend filter, remember we don't use moving averages for support and resistance. We can use them for trend direction. If it's flat as a pancake or going sideways like it was yesterday, a symmetrical wedge definition, if you have two higher lows, two higher lows and two lower highs, that creates a wedge. That is when the market has an indecision of buyers and sellers. And if there's an indecision in buyers and sellers, you have two lower highs and two higher lows. So what I marked up yesterday, and it worked out great for us, is I saw two lower highs right here at the high, two higher lows, so I marked up this wedge. And what I said we would do, we would break through the wedge, come down. I said if we retest the 51 and a half level, that would be the short. And sure enough, it came down, retested my wedge, and then we had a huge sell-off. That's called a symmetrical wedge. When there's an indecision between buyers and sellers, it has to have two higher lows and two lower highs. Then you draw your trend lines. What happens is when the price gets close to the apex, which is the end of the wedge, it gets constricted and price breaks out. It likes to retest, and then you look for market delta to go. So what we do is, is we try to buy the low on market profile, sell the high in flat markets. Keep buying the low, selling the high off market profile. Sell HVA, buy LVA. We never trade off the blue line in flat markets. Once it breaks out of the wedge, we look for a retest of that symmetrical wedge. Those two lower highs, two higher lows, two lower highs, and there's our negative market delta. And that was just a beautiful trade. Um, almost $500 per one contract on a symmetrical wedge. So that's what a symmetrical wedge looks like. Gerald, go over to crude oil. Let me go over, and, and now the symmetrical wedge, remember, it's a break retest, and that's how we do that trade. If you look on yesterday, I said we have a bull flag in crude. Now, what a bull flag is comprised, these are very easy to recognize. A bull flag will be you got these big five minute bars up. Let me blow this up a little bit. I'm going to take a second. A bull flag is if I see a big giant five minute bar up, five minute bar up, five minute bar up, typically there'll be two to three big five minute bars up. If I see that, I know I'm into what's called a bull flag if it's on the upside. A bear flag will look like opposite. Be big bar down, big bar down, big bar down. Once you have three, two or three consecutive big long bars up, the market goes sideways to down on a bull flag. You'll start seeing lower highs and, and lower lows. That connects the flag. So the flag pull is going to be the start of the big five minute bar up to the end of the big long five minute bars. Once you get smaller five minute bars, that's when the flag's gonna start forming. So the flag pull's gonna be the big bars, then you're gonna see lower, lower highs, lower lows, that forms a the flag. What happens is, is that as long as you don't break the lower flag pull, you don't close below it. That bull flag is in play. The distance that you take, now I came up with a target of, before it broke out, before we broke out, I had a target of 50-40 yesterday. Here's my target. How did I do it? You take the low of the first start of the big five-minute bar to the high of the last five-minute bar that's the longest bar. You take that, that's the distance, and you put it on top of the flag. That gives you your exact target on the bull flag. Bear flag would be opposite. So you can see my target was dead on yesterday. It stopped at 40.50. I told traders when it got up there, that's our target. And the bull flag formation formed. 
So that's what's called a bull flag. Bear flag will look, look opposite. You'd have big giant five minute bars down and then it would go up and then it would break. So that's how you trade a flag. Now what you can also do is you can trade descending triangles. Now a descending triangle would look like this. A descending triangle is two lower highs just like a symmetrical wedge. Remember, a symmetrical wedge is two lower highs and two higher lows. What a descending triangle is, is you have two lower highs, which is bare. If you have two higher lows, you have a flat bottom. If you see that, that is a bearish sign that the market is going to break what's called a descending triangle. So the difference between an, a symmetrical wedge and a descending, a descending, you can see you have a flat bottom, so typically a double bottom, will typically be a double bottom, and it'll be two lower highs. So what you'll do is, is your target on this is going to be the distance between your first target, between the top of the wedge to the bottom of the wedge. Your first push should be right there, What you did. See, the first push will start consolidating. That's going to be your first target on a descending triangle. Now, an ascending triangle would look the opposite. It would have two higher lows and, two, and a flat top. All right? So that's something for us to realize. Now, what you can do also is we can have a falling wedge or a rising wedge. What that is, is if you got a falling wedge, Let's say we have a wedge pattern. A falling wedge is bullish, where you are going lower into a wedge. Once it breaks out of that wedge and retests that wedge, that's a bullish pattern. You want to buy the retest after you break out of that wedge. So you'll have falling wedges are bearish. Why? I mean bullish, and rising wedges are bullish. So if you see price coming down and creating lower lows and lower highs and then finally break out of that wedge, the first retest is a long pattern. So those are your basic patterns that you do um, on a daily basis. You want to look at descending, ascending triangles, rising, falling wedges, symmetrical wedges, ascending and descending triangles, of course, bull bear flags. That's all you really need to know. Now, if it overlaps market profile, that's your green light to get long or short. Okay? Like yesterday on crude, when it retested the bull flag, look how my lower trend line tested price profile. And I said 75 yesterday was major support. Why did I say that? It's right on profile. So what you want to do with these patterns is when they overlap market profile, volume profile, you got yourself a green light to get long or short. And those are the patterns I look for every day. You, you don't have to know all these patterns, just these few patterns. And if they overlap market profile, I do not use pattern recognition by itself. Patterns can fail, but I love when patterns overlap market profile.